Good morning and a good Chodesh. Today is Friday, the first day of Tammuz. And is Erev Shabbos, Parshas Kairach. This Shabbos is going to be Erev, the day, the second day of Tammuz, which is the, the eve of Gimel Tammuz, the holy day of the Rebbe. It's been 27 years, it's hard to believe, since we saw the Rebbe last. But really, we see the Rebbe every single day. And tomorrow, Metzachem, join us for Fabrengen, Shabbos, at Marhaus, in 1315 Avenue Y. And Fabrengen uh, in honor of the Rebbe, we're going to have people talking uh, with their own experience with the Rebbe. It's going to be very interesting. Join us. So we're, today, we we'll begin chapter 10 in the Iger, in the Shar HaYichud Ve'emunah. In the Panya that talks about the unity of God and the faith in God. So last chapter, yesterday, chapter 9, the Alter Rebbe concluded with, say, with a quote from the Zoya that the Sphiros are called Raza de Mehemnusa. What are we talking about? The Sphiros is the attributes of God. The attributes of God versus the other creations of God. The attributes of God, meaning the way God is with his attributes, the wisdom, the intellect, and the emotions, emotional attributes in the world of Atsilas, in the highest spiritual world, there God is one with them. He's one with his attributes. And this is something that is really beyond understanding. For a human to understand that, he quoted the Maimonides and says, it's beyond ain, it's not in the cap capacity, cap capability of a human to understand. The fact that Hashem is one with his knowledge, one with his wisdom. By us humans, we think in terms of everything what we have, it's it's added to our existence. If you have knowledge about, you learn law, you have another, another thing, thing added to you. Emotions, everything is something that is added to you. But Hashem is one with everything. And that's why the, the Zoya calls it Raza de Mehem Nusa. This is the secret of faith. Because at a certain point, we get that to the point that we, it's impossible to understand but it's but it's possible to comp comprehend it with faith. This is, in short, what Alter Rebbe spoke in chapter nine. And today, in chapter ten, Alter Rebbe continues to explain that, despite the fact that it is this is something that is beyond understanding, nevertheless, the Kabbalists gave us something to try to understand as much as possible. And he brings an example, what the Kabbalist called this uh, attributes of Hashem, they called it, they turned it with uh, the term light, is the light of Hashem. Now, using, using the, the term light gives us a little bit of understanding when we think about the relationship between the light and the sun. Now, if this sounds familiar, the uh, light and the sun, is, it is because we learned it in, in the earlier chapters, chapter three. There, the Alter Rebbe explained that just like the sunlight in the sun is null nullified completely, it doesn't have its own existence, that the Alter Rebbe used to explain that the same thing is also the world, the creation, doesn't have its own existence, only a Shem's creation. However, here, the Alter Rebbe takes this example, but it uses it in a, in a totally different way. And he says, here he uses the, the concept, not that this light is nullified in the sun, but the idea that the light is unified with the sun with its source, which is 
the luminary. And, he, and, and here is the difference between the creation that God created, whatever God created does not have its own existence and that is nullified. And versus the attributes of God in the world of Atzilus, those attributes of Hashem that, that is emanated from God, and yet God is one with them. There, here the Al-Tarebbe uses this example of the sunlight, the way it is united with its source, with the source, which is the luminary, which is the sun. I know it's a little deep. After the class, we're willing to discuss a little further. But let's, uh, let's look inside. We'll see how the Alter Rebbe explains. That's the Alter Rebbe. Ach, Mikol Makoim. Nevertheless, despite the fact that the spheres transcend intellect and comprehension, as we said, the Zoya calls it Raza de Mehemnusa, the secret of faith, because that's where the idea of the sphere is being one with Hashem, being emanated from Hashem, at the same time being one with Hashem is something beyond our understanding. Nevertheless, as Al Rebbe Hoyl, since the Teirev speaks in the language of man. In order to modulate with the ear what it is able to hear, the Teirev gives us in terms, uses language that we can understand as much as possible. Lekach, therefore, nitan reshus lechach meyoemes, ledaba besfira is bederech moshe. Permission has been granted to the Kabbalists. Chach meyoemes literally means the scholars of truth to speak allegorically of the sefiris. Using the allegory of the light, as we shall see soon. The Koru Oison Oirois, the Kabbalist called the Sphirois lights, using terminology borrowed from the revelation of light. And Al Terebe goes on to explain. Today, Shal Yedei Amosh Lazer, Yuvan Lonuk Tsas, in Yenayichud, Shalakadesh Bauchu, Umidoisa. This is so that by means of this metaphor, the nature of the unity of the Holy One, blessed be He, and His attributes will be somewhat understood by us. We'll understand somewhat, a little bit, the nature of the unity of Hashem and His attributes. What is the, what is the marshal? What is the metaphor is used? Marshal, ke'ein yichud oir ashemesh. It is by way of illustration. This is like the unity of the sunlight that is within the solar globe, the solar globe, with the solar globe itself, which is called not only sun, but also a luminary, inasmuch as it emits light. So in other words, the sun has many qualities. You have, you have, you have, it is a luminary, brings light, brings warmth, brings other things. But here we're, we're focusing on the fact that the sun is a luminary. So the light of the sun, when it is in the sun itself, as being the luminary, it is united and one with its source. Now, the Rebbe says, as it says in the Torah, that the sun is called the luminary, as it is written, it is written that God created the greater luminary. So meaning that this is the very source of light. Now, the ray and the beam which spreads forth and shines from it is called light. 
Moshe Kasov, as it is written, Vayikra Eleikim La'oil Yoim. And God called the light day. And Alter Rebbe goes on, Ukesha Oir, Ubime Koyre Beguf Hashemesh. Now, when the light is within its source, in the orb of the sun, it is united with it in absolute unity. Because there, within the sun, there is only one entity, namely the body of the luminary which emits light. And this is this is the example that is using. And it says, Ki azivo oyer shom etzem echon mamashim gufa moir ameyo. Because there, in the sun, the ray and the light is absolutely one, one being with the body of the luminary, which, illuminate, which illuminates. Ve'ele shumetzi is klau mefneatzma, and it has no existence by itself at all. So again, here, Dal Rebbe focuses on the point that is, is not, not the point that is that the light, sunlight is nullified, but, but rather by the fact that the sunlight is unified with its source. It is one with its source. And now comes Dal Rebbe to say that this is, is the, the example that we can use to understand a little bit the relationship between God and it, his attributes of the Chachma, the spheres in the higher world, the world of Atzillus, which their godliness is revealed and it is one with God himself. Now precisely in this manner, and even more so, more than the example of the sun and its light, is the unity of a midoisa of Shela Kadesh Baruchu, Uretzayna Vachmasa Bechelem Atzilus, Imahusa Vatmusa Kabayahu. So the unity of the attributes of the Holy One, blessed be He, and His will and His wisdom in the world of Atzilus, in the higher world, as we explained, Atzilus is the highest spiritual world of the four worlds. So on the one hand, you have the attributes and his essence and being as it were. So this unity, who becomes clothed in them, in the spheres of Atzillus and unites with them in perfect unity. And Hashem unites with these spheres completely. Since they derived, they derived and emanated from Him. Just as by way of analogy, the light is diffused from the sun. However, now the Alter Rebbe says that the, 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 the example is not a perfect one. Not a perfect one. Why? Because in the end of the day, the sun and the light, this, the light is something that comes from the sun. The sun is a luminary. But Hashem, to say that Hashem is Chachma, is Chesed, obviously, obviously we cannot say that. Hashem is much above it. But nevertheless, it gives us this example just to give us somewhat of an understanding. However, God's unity with his attributes is not exactly in this manner, meaning like the fusion of the sun with the light, which is still within it. But in a manner which is remote and concealed from our comprehension. For his ways are higher than our ways. However, nevertheless, he goes back and forth. <clears throat> Despite its superior manner of unity, since one must modulate the ear, what it is able to hear. 
we have to <coughs> give us satisfy what we're able to understand. Nishma venizboinen mimeshal oira shemesh. So we can perceive and comprehend. We have to meditate about this. Just as in the analogy, the light of the sun, which is unified, united with and, and, and uh, united with and nullified in its source. Here it does use the term nullified because it, again is using both things. It's unified and nullified in its source. And has no name of its own, only the name of its source. So when the light is in the sun, it doesn't have the name light. It is part of it of the luminary. Ah, so too, call me Daisov all the attributes of the Holy One, blessed be He. And his will and his wisdom. They are not designated and called by these names at all relative to him. Only in relation to the creatures which are below the world of Atsilas. In Bria, Yetzira, Asliya, these creatures being both higher and lower. So only after the below the world of Atsilis, as the Rebbe explains, there you can have these terms, the names of these, the will, the wisdom, and so on. Shavayosam, Vechayusam, and Agasam. Shakadishbochu, Mehava, Mechaya, Oisam, and Igam, which are brought into existence and given life. And guided in their conduct by the Holy One, Blessed Be, who built This is through His will and His wisdom and understanding and knowledge, which guard themselves in His holy, emotive attributes, such as Chesed, Gevura, and Tiferes, and so on. In the Yisab Medrash, as it is written, it is stated in the Medrash, by means of ten things was the world created. And it goes on explains the Chachma, Bisvunna, Bedas, Vechula, the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and so on. The Chiv, as it is written, Hashem Bechachma Yosad Eretz, God founded the earth with wisdom. He established the heavens with understanding. With his knowledge, the depths of the abyss were burst open. And so on. And also, so we see from the Medrash, all of these ten things come from the Sephiris, the ten Sephiris come from Hashem. And also we say it in the Zoyar. It says in the Zoyar that something we say every Friday before Shabbos in the Pesach Aliyah, it says, Kemaimer Aliyah, the Apikas Asar Tikunin, as, and as expressed by Elijah, the prophet Elijah, that says in the Zoyar. And the Apikas Asar Tikunin, you have brought forth 10 Tikunin, 10 garments, the Korin and Lehoin Asar Sviran. And we call them ten sephiris, ten attributes. And those ten attributes is through which to direct hidden worlds, all misesimin, the lois galion, hidden worlds that are not revealed, the almin days galion, and worlds revealed, referring to the lower world. And through them, you conceal yourself that from created beings, Hashem conceals himself from created beings through these ten sephiris, so that they will not be able to perceive the divine life force that creates and vivifies them. So this 
So the Alter is something that we understand and we don't understand. We get the we get the example that the Kabbalists give us as much as we can understand. But then it's, at the end of the day, it's called the Raza de Mehem Nusa, the secret of the faith. Why do we need to know it? If it's something we don't understand, because this is what we the concept, the word faith, emuna, comes also from the word, the word of men, which means practicing. Like mitamen, someone who practices. Practice, practice makes perfect. So emuna is practicing, meaning that you practice again and again. And as the Rebbe explains that being the Jew has the connection, a deeper connection, which comes beyond the logic. is created from, the neshama comes from above the tzimtzum. Therefore, by us, we are able to reach to this, con- this level of understanding and connecting to it, even things that are beyond understanding. And again, this goes with, by way of practicing. We're learning about it again. And we practice with actual practice by doing the mitzvahs, doing the Torah, and so on. This is the end of today's shir. This is Hashem. We'll see you on Sunday morning, which is Gimel Kamas. We wish you all a good Shabbos and a good Chaydesh. And only Besurah Stavis. Any questions we can take now.